We're gonna see. This is uh, maybe the fifth beer I've ever made. I don't make beers too often, so uh, you're learning as I'm learning. Hi, this is the Accidental Brewer, and um, we're gonna be making an Imperial Stout, Russian Imperial Stout. Yeah, that's what it is, a Russian Imperial Stout today. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Hassel wanted to make a beer uh, at some point in time in the past, and I was like, you know, I've tried to make a couple of all grain kits and I've not really done the best at those. So I'm gonna try a different kit that's supposed to be fairly easy. That's an extract kit. It does have some grain uh, in it, but it is mostly an extract kit. So th this is what I mean right here. Um, and I still have some things in it. It's uh, the Brewer's Best um, Russian Imperial Stout. And uh, I'll tell you, a little bit about the thing, uh, the uh, stuff that's going into this, or the ingredients. So we've got some crushed Cara Munich dark malt, uh, crushed black barley and chocolate wheat malt, um, maltodextrin, some uh, dry malt, two bags of dry malt extract, a Brewer's Beck liquid dark liquid malt extract, and a Brewer's Best pure dark liquid so it's two things of dark liquid malt extract i don't know why i am going to add some yeast holes to this because i felt like they've done pretty good in the past with helping uh, fermentation to have nutrients um so we're going to start right up we've got also got behind us here a uh, 10 gallon pot which is a little overkill but my two gallon pot didn't quite have enough room so i need like a five gallon pot and i don't have one but uh, we've got the 10 gallon pot back here. It is getting up to 150 to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I don't know what that is in Celsius. Um, I'll try to remember to put that in the video. But um, so it's uh, 150 to 165 degrees. When it gets to that point, we're gonna put the caramel and the uh, black barley in this bag, in the, um, the what's going to become the wort and water uh, and we're going to let that steep for about 20 minutes and then after that point we're going to put it put it on the boil um, and uh, add some more or I don't actually think we add anything at that point <laughs> uh, but we'll we'll bring it to a boil and then we'll uh, we'll go with the instructions at that point so uh, I'm just going to make sure right here that it doesn't say that I'm supposed to add anything else once it goes to boil yeah so remove it and then uh, bring the water to a gentle boil and add all the rest of the ingredients. Yes, that's what we're supposed to do. I also have a stirring spoon, stirring wand that I can use to be able to stir this thing. Uh, it might be a little short. I have a larger one I may go get from outside. Uh, and there we go. I even have my own hop spider thing that I can use. Um, all this stuff has been sanitized sanitized off screen in our, uh, we have a big bucket that we use to sanitize things. So this should be pretty close to that 150 mark. It's at 140 right now. So it's about halfway to one, one, um, 150. So I'm gonna go ahead and start preparing the um, grains to steep. So do you wanna cut this open? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna hold this up. And I, I did sanitize this bag. I put the bag in sanitizer and I've let it sit here for a few minutes to get most of the liquid out. So there's just a little bit of sanitizer liquid on the bag still. But that's not gonna matter so much because this is gonna go in the, um, the wart uh, as we said. Cutting things open, doing stuff. Man, these grains smell good. I can't imagine that they're super fresh. Um, I did buy this from my local brew shop, so um, I think they keep stuff in pretty, pretty fresh. They'll also holding it as well as I'd hoped it would. All right, we are at 150 degrees, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here to steep. 
and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes with other stuff. No. Uh, I either buy my stuff from um, Bull City Homebrew or Atlantic Brewer, and I'll put the uh, Atlantic Brew Supply, I'll put the links down the description below to tell you about it. Uh, we're also using for our hops, our hop additions at um, the end of the boil, I believe, uh, Columbus uh, hop pellets. They are Yakima Chief Columbus hop pellets. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, so uh, it's been 20 minutes and we have you know, it, it got about 165, so it got a little hotter than I think it probably should have. But now, I need to take this out. So I'm using some tongs so I don't burn myself. And then I'm going to put it in a bowl that I've um, kept sanitized, clean and sanitized. It won't really matter that much, but I want to release most of the liquid out of here. So Hassel is going to sit here and hold that. For a moment while I rehydrate my yeast. I'm just going to go ahead and start that process. I normally don't rehydrate my yeast and I think it would probably be fine not to rehydrate your yeast. However, I'm doing it specifically by the instructions in the pack and the yeast say to rehydrate it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that so that it's got some time before uh, we pitch it you know, a, a little bit of time to do that. So basically I just put it in a little bit of water and then I um, let the let the water kind of mix in with the yeast. Um, and I'll just twirl it every now and then to let it kind of come up and, and get rehydrated at that point. Um, now the next step while we're waiting for the liquid to come out is to turn this thing up on high and go ahead and get it boiling. So now that we've rewarded the dog with his outside time, we took a pause for that, because um, he needed to go outside. Uh, we're gonna get this thing back up to boiling, um, and then we're going to put the malt extracts, the maltodextrin and the, um, the liquid and dry malt extracts in here. So have you ever seen yeast get rehydrated? No. This is what rehydrated yeast looks like. There's not much. Yeah, as a matter of fact, so something for you to know, you cannot pitch yeast uh, or put yeast in something that is like over 100 degrees. They say, it says there's generally a tolerance on the packet. So this, this packet right here, is it'll this? say the tolerance. Yeah, that's, that's what's in there. It'll say the tolerance somewhere on here, um, or generally it does, for the, the heat that you can put it in. So right there, it says 30 to 35 degrees Celsius, or 86 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit is the warmest that the water can be. And so you don't want to go above 95 degrees. Above 95 degrees will kill the yeast. All right, so our wort is now boiling, and we are going to put in all the things that we're supposed to. It says to add the hops at this point, um, and uh, do it and let it boil for 60 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and add in the maltodextrin. I put in the hop spider up there. You'll notice that it disappeared magically and just appeared over there. Fantastic. <laughs> So now we're going to add the Yakima Chief pellets to this. We need the scissors. So that's fun. Um, so there you go. You can cut that open. And we're just going to put these inside of our hop spider. Um, and then they will become part of the wort while it boils. And we're going to boil this. You can go ahead and put them in, inside of this right here. Just down inside. No, no, oh. this. Sorry. <laughs> oh, well, no. I'll have to strain this now. <laughs> yes. Poured the hot pellets right into the wart. It smells like a uh, I'm going to see if I can find the spider and get those out. One hour later. Do that, actually. Uh, just spray some sanitizer on it, on the bottom. That's good. 
and just uh, let it sit there for a few minutes while I finish letting this drain out. It's like it's peeing. Very peeing. I think that's about as much as it's going to come out, maybe. It's about as much as it's going to come out. So now what we want to do is set this in here with the lid on it so it'll cool off. So um, got to grab this, slid it on top to prevent any extra thing from falling down inside of it and I'm just going to keep adding ice to it from the ice bag right here uh, for the next 20 or 30 minutes while the um, temperature goes down. So now what I want to do is transfer my wart and I'm using an auto siphon and the reason I'm doing that is um, there's still some stuff down inside here that I don't want uh, in there, uh, probably some of the um, the hop pellet stuff uh, that's in there um, that didn't get in the spider uh, because somebody missed. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm using the auto siphon instead of pouring it in, but I'll stir it up really good to aerate uh, the wart. Um, and then uh, I'm going to take an original gravity. I, I, so this is a tiny amount of water. It's not going to affect my gravity very much. But I'll pour that in beforehand just to make sure that I have um, everything in there uh, well. But the yeast really um, bloomed very nicely in here. You can already see bubbles and foam, so that's good. That took about 30, 40 minutes for it to do that. Um, this is the fun part where you're going to watch us doing nothing. So I'm going to fast forward, and then we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so... Here we are, and um, it is time to uh, go ahead and add the extra water that's needed to be able to get this up to uh, the proper amount of gallons. So I'm gonna pick this up so that you can see what we're doing and turn it around. Um, so right here, that where it's already at, is at the three gallon line. That's where the uh, wart is so far. So I need to turn it back so that I can see it. And um, we're gonna add two more gallons of water. So if you wanna grab one and I'll grab the other, you can go to the other side and start pouring it in. And I've kept the thermometer in here so that I know when it gets down to about the right temperature. I'm also kinda glad that we're getting to do this because this allows us to um, aerate the, the wart a bit. Um, it also lets us make a really nice mess outside of the wart, um, you know, where where we can make sure that we're um, doing 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 justice to the outside world. Um, but we got it up to five gallons now, so great. I may add just a tiny bit more water to it. So if you fill it up to about right here, because it's not quite five gallons. All right, so pour, start pouring, and I'll tell you when to stop. Right there, stop. Good job. And just set that aside for, we might need it at some point. All right. So now we've done that. Uh, I'm just gonna set this up here for right now because I don't want to make a mess everywhere else. Um, you put that over, you can just set it on top, like clamp it to the, uh, to the kettle that we use to boil. And before I add anything else, I'm going to see what our OG is. It says on here, uh, because, you know, I'm cool and I, I moved the thing over, I, I didn't take a look. Would you put the hydrometer in here, please? Thank you. All right. So... I 
think it's supposed to be around uh, eight to nine percent gravity, or eight to nine percent alcohol by volume. Yeah, because gravity is is what we're measuring here. Um, so let that set for a moment. Let me take another reading. So original gravity is 1.070. Now, it says that it should be 1.076 to 1.080. So we've um, not really reached the, um, the gravity that we wanted to with the sugars that we have. So I'm gonna add a little bit of um, maltodextrin to uh, bring up the gravity just a little bit. Uh, so I have some malt extract here um, that I just keep around for these kind of situations. And I'm gonna add, I don't know, maybe um, a cup, maybe two to see, see what I can do to bring up that, that gravity. Now, technically I'm supposed to boil it again to be able to add more to it, but I don't think that's gonna hurt anything. So. You go sanitize that for me. Oh, that went over just a little bit. So we'll say like a cup and two teaspoons. And I just kind of sprinkle that over the top. And then I may not put the whole amount in here because it seems like that's a lot. So I'm going to stir this in. One of the things that I love about maltodextrin is how clumpy it gets when uh, your brew is a little bit not as um, warm as it was before. <laughs> so we'll see how uh, and most of that most of that went in though. So it's not too clumpy. Pretty good. Otherwise other than the mess that I make whenever I do these things. And of course, you know, get foam on the top and all that other stuff. All right, let's see again. Oh, it smells so hoppy. I am very worried that <laughs> this is gonna be a super hoppy beer. Um, let's see how, see how many points I got. I just wanted to get 0 .06 uh, points. Uh, Spill beer on the counter. Point, not point oh six, point oh oh six to point oh uh, point oh one is what I wanted to get. So, what did we achieve? It didn't go anywhere. <laughs> it might have moved 0 .001 points, which can't be right. So maybe I didn't mix that in good enough. Well, we'll see. I'm not gonna add any more because I don't want to um, mess with the, um, the fermentation too much. Um, and being off by 0 0.006 isn't that much. I mean, it's still going to be, um, if it ferments down to 0 0.017, it'll still be um, somewhere around 7.5% ABV, which is respectable. I mean, not that I'm looking for, I'm looking for it to taste good, not to have a high gravity. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens there. Move some of this off now. This is a six, somebody may notice that's watching this. This is a six gallon fermenter, um, which is, uh, you know, probably more than I need for this. I'm not worried about 
like having too much head space or anything like that uh, on here during the fermentation process. I'm only really worried about that uh, during like a secondary fermentation. So when I move this over, I have an actual smaller um, glass fermenter that I'll use to do this. Now, by the way, this, uh, the, I'm pitching the yeast right now and this container before I put the yeast in it was sanitized. The only thing that it has in here is yeast. So now I'm gonna mix that up. Now we need to add the yeast holes. Um, so if you could add um, about five, six, we're gonna need to add tablespoons. So, so let's just add one teaspoon to this. I've been adding way too much. Yep, one of those. Uh, maybe not put it on there. Let me move this out of the way. I'll just move it over here. Yeah, that's good. It can be a little over. Just drop it in. Good, right there, like that. All right. So this has been pretty much it. I recorded the um, the original gravity on top of the, or I will record it on top of the fermenter, uh, just like I normally do. We have everything set aside to. Um, put the airlock in and everything like that. So I'm just gonna set that aside real quick. I'm gonna put this on top. It's a little hard to get leverage here. There it goes. I'll make sure that I've got a good seal here in a moment. Um, Ooh, that just went way down in there. But I have uh, positive pressure. Yep, I have positive pressure. So the original gravity was 1.070. And there we go. All right, so this morning I came downstairs. I don't know if you can see how bowed that is, but this thing is going nuts. I probably should have put a blow off tube in. So. Uh, I'm gonna have to switch out the airlocks, clean this up. I mean, it got dirty all the way around, as you can see. And then in the closet, it was crazy nuts, uh, dirty. So we'll see what I end up having to do. Um, I'll let you know after I get done with this what I end up doing to clean it up and everything. But uh, fun times. Never quite had anything like that happen before. That is crazy. Well, I'm not going to worry about that too much, but I'm going to clean the lid off and then put it back on, clean the rim and everything, and try to not get anything crazy going on in here. That was a very active fermentation last night. All right, as you can see, Cooper's in the background, and yes, it is back together. I got it all cleaned up, but it is still just blowing out, as you can even see, like right now. It's just going nuts. So uh, I'm gonna put it back in the um, closet of fermentation for a bit and we'll see what ends up happening. Okay, final video for, uh, for this thing. Look at that, it's crazy. I had to put a weight on it because uh, otherwise it was bowing the top um, because it had extended the lid. So I'm probably gonna have to buy a new lid for this fermenter, but I ended up uh, switching out the airlocks because this airlock works fine on something like this um, where it uh, it has plenty of room to you know let gas escape and everything not sure did I tear the oh I think I tore that up I'm gonna have to replace that gasket on my head that sucks um, <clears throat> so I've got more surgery to do today yay fun times um, but yeah I believe that is the ginger beer that I made a while back. So nothing that's come out on the channel. channel. But yeah, there we go. We'll catch you back here next time when we do probably a catch up on maybe one of the brews that we've already done.